Now for question 6 part 1, okay again we have two functions Okay what we're supposed to do, oh no part 1 Okay before we're going to do part 1 we have to sketch the curve Okay so sketch the graph this and that, well we, with a GC There really is no excuse that you can't get this full marks Okay and of course uh, of course, you need to know all the basic things that you already knew since your O level days Okay you know that you can launch 0 and therefore x cannot be equal to 3 So x equals to 3 will be your vertical asymptote and all these things you can't really uh, get it from a GC Okay and what we do know as well is that uh, we ln 1 will give us 0 and that happens when x is equal to Two. Okay, so when x is equal to two, you know that you you will cut the x-axis at one. So the curve, well, looks a little like this. Okay, and it will tend down to infinity forever. Okay, your GC shows that it stops somewhere in the middle, hanging there. Okay, so this x-intercept is two. Y-intercept will be ln three. Okay, you can get all this very easily by substituting x equals zero or y equals zero. Very simple. Okay, now from a GC, it looks like as though okay the the curve has got a horizontal asymptote, but it there isn't. Okay, your long curve goes up forever, it's to infinity. Okay, so uh, this there you go. This is our f x. Okay, and of course the g x. Again, using the g c, you shouldn't have any problem drawing this at all. Okay, uh, you may have to zoom a little bit though because I, th I thought it looks rather small. Okay, anyway, it looks a little like this, like a bell shape. Ah, okay. So here, this is our one because when x is zero, you get one, and uh, there is only one horizontal asymptote. Okay, and there is the x x-axis. So there's no x-intercept. Okay, you can go and try finding it, but there isn't any. So this is our g x. Okay, so this is the sketch. No problem. All right. Now do remember. I think I mentioned this a lot, a lot of times already. In any sketch, okay, you will always have to show the x y intercept. Okay, or any asymptotes all right so you have to show all the equations of all the asymptotes if there's any yeah in this case the x axis is the asymptote so we show that well y is equal to zero because well we can people can't really tell the dotted line there right okay all right now hence or otherwise give a reason to show that f is one to one and g is not it's obvious isn't it i mean this is one to one this is not one to one okay anyway that's why it's a hands part la. so you already sketched so no problem all right let's go on to part one Okay, from part one, find the inverse function of f. Uh, find the inverse function of f inverse. Huh? This this is weird. Okay, I I think what the question is really asking you for is the inverse function of f, not inverse function of f inverse. Okay, inverse function of f inverse means you inverse the f inverse, you get back f. Okay, then of course the answer you take a look at is not really f. Okay, so it's not a trick question. It's a typo error here. Alright, so the inverse function of f, not the inverse function of f inverse. Alright, it doesn't matter. You should know. Um, you know, it, otherwise it looks really weird, this question. So we let y equals to uh, ln of 3 minus x. Okay, so anti log, we have e to the power y is equal to 3 minus x. To make x subject, we have x is equal to 3 minus e y. Okay, so let me scroll down a little. Okay, and therefore. Our what is that? F inverse x will be three minus e x. Okay, for the domain. Ah, now this is interesting. The domain of f inverse is the range of f, and as you can see, the range of f is from negative infinity to positive infinity, and therefore x, the domain of f inverse, will be x is all real numbers. Okay, so there you go. All right, this is the inverse of f. Okay, not the inverse of f inverse. Giving its rule and its domain. Well, three marks. Well, easy. No problem. Okay. Now, part two. Determine if the composite function gf exists. If it does, state its rule and domain. Well, definitely means it does exist already. Huh? Okay. So, well, let's take a look. Um, I must still pretend to find out, understand. Okay. So, for gf to exist, okay, what must happen? Well, the range of f must be equal to or subset of the domain of g okay so the first thing we want to find out will be what is the range of f so the range of f is from well negative infinity to positive infinity we mentioned that earlier and how about the domain of g 
Hey, well, the domain of G is given to us, isn't it? Let's take a look. Domain of G, X all real numbers. Okay, so when X is all real numbers, it means that it's from negative infinity to positive infinity as well. So, they are exactly equal, right? So, since the range of F is equal to the domain of G, okay, therefore, our GF exists. Okay? Not that difficult to figure out why, yeah? Let's move on. Oh, if it does, state its rule and domain. Okay, so state its rule means we have to go figure out what is the GF. Okay, so GF means you are going to G the F. So you're going to substitute in your F into the G. Alright, so, well, I think it isn't that difficult. Uh, so let's try. Okay, so GF means you're going to substitute the F into the G. So substituting F into G, you will get 1 over... Whoa. Lawn 3 minus x. Put it in a bracket. Square it. Alright. Plus 1. Okay. And the domain of GF is actually the domain of F. And of course, we all know that the domain of F is such that x is less than 3. Okay. It's given to us here. Okay. Domain of F. So, the domain of GF will always be equal to the domain of F, and therefore this is our GF with its domain. Alright, okay, there we go. Now, the last part. State a maximum subset for the domain of G, so that the inverse of G exists. And so otherwise, find the inverse function of G. Now, this time around, they got it right, okay? So there's no typo here. Okay, now, first, song, uh, first thing first, we must understand why does why doesn't our g inverse exist okay the g inverse doesn't exist because it's not one to one all right so how are we going to make it one to one such that we can have the maximum domain okay so i mean one to one there are many ways you can chop this up into one to one right i mean we, we can choose a point here choose a point here and now you can say okay now this is one to one Okay, but is this domain the maximum possible for the one-to-one -one had to happen? Obviously not, right? So what we need would be the maximum domain in order to make this one-to-one. -one. So, well, it's either this half, okay, which is one-to-one, -one, isn't it? Or the other half, the left side half, okay? So part three, this answer is actually rather simple. Okay, so such that you can write something like that. The maximum domain of G, okay, f such that the G inverse can exist, will be equal to either from 0 to infinity, okay, or negative infinity to 0. Okay, either way, I mean, of course, you can write this way R plus or R minus. Okay, positive real values or negative real values. And there we go. This is rather easy. No problem at all. Okay, so the next thing is to find the inverse of G. Alright, so let us scroll down a little bit more. Okay, now GX is equal to 1 over X squared plus 1. Okay, so this is our GX. Right? Yeah, right. Okay, such that X is all real values. Okay, but we know that well x cannot be all real values now because otherwise the g inverse will not exist. So well we choose either positive or negative is really up to you. So to find the g inverse, alright, so the same thing we do as per normal, we let y equals to this. Okay, and then we reciprocate both sides. We have this. Alright, and we need to scroll down further. Okay, and here we go. We'll have x squared equals to 1 over y minus 1. And of course, now we have to square both sides. Then, of course, we have a plus and minus of 1 over, 1 over y minus 1. Okay, and because in this case, our domain is the positive side, which is the right side of the curve, uh, our inverse will be the positive root. And therefore, our g inverse of x will be equal to the positive root of 
1 minus uh, sorry 1 over x minus 1 and the domain of our g inverse is actually the range of our g so let's take a look at the range of our g by looking at the graph okay now this is the red color part that we're talking about okay so this is the inv uh, the inverse of this gx okay so the range of this g is from 0 to 1 and therefore the domain of the g inverse will be from 0 to 1 as well okay so it'll be 0 to 1 okay inclusive 1 why why inclusive 1 well because x can be equal to 1 right let's take a look okay because x the original range includes 1 because it's all real values okay the domain of g is all real values yeah and therefore the domain of g includes 0 and therefore the range of g will include the 1 and since the range of g includes the 1 the domain of the g inverse will also include the 1 okay